Okay, so welcome to this next video in the uh, playlist on functional analysis. So, uh, you'll be relieved to know this is the last video we're going to do on separability. Uh, so, after that we will move on, we will move on to something more important um, in hashtags. It, it is more important, uh, I think very few people will contest that what we are about to move on to is more important than separability. Uh, but we will just conclude separability uh, by uh, asserting that um, B, uh, the metric space B A B, uh, which is um, the, uh, if you recall from earlier videos, this is the set of all uh, functions which map the interval A B onto the real line uh, such that they are bounded functions, uh, such that uh, F is bounded, which means uh, that at all times there exists some, uh, let's say, there exists an M F. Uh, which is, uh, what should I call it, which is an element of the real numbers, uh, such that uh, f is less than or equal to mf, and I should have said the modulus of f, that's what I mean, the modulus of f is less than or equal to mf uh, for all x is an element of ab, basically. And I will draw a picture to tell you what that means. Um, so that's the set on which we are defining our metric space, uh, and uh, we have defined this metric space already. I'll show you what the metric is in a moment after I've just told you uh, in, in a picture what this bounded means. Uh, so uh, here's a picture. Here is the interval um, a, b, and uh, the function f is mapping the interval a, b onto, uh, real, onto real number values. Uh, now, the function doesn't have to be continuous, but I don't like drawing non-continuous functions. I'm going to end up drawing a continuous function. Uh, that's not a particularly brilliant example, actually, because I wanted it to be positive and negative at some point. Uh, so, in fact, let's have another example. Uh, let's have this as our function here. Uh, so this has nice uh, positive values and negative values, and it is within a the interval a, b. So this is our function f, this thing here. Right, uh, so what it means to say that there exists some m, f, which is an element of the real number such that the modulus of f is less than or equal to m, f uh, for all x as an element of a, b. Basically, that means that I can draw uh, some uh, cylinder around this uh, x-axis, so this is the x-axis here, I want to be able to draw a cylinder around the x-axis, like so, like that, and basically uh, this radius here, this distance from here to here, is the mf, and similarly from here to here, it's meant to be the same amount, so mf. So this sort of cylinder around the x-axis, and basically um, the entire function is going to be contained within that cylinder, that there exists some radius, this is the radius of the cylinder, there exists some radius uh, for which the function is entirely contained in. That's what it means uh, to say that, because uh, the modulus um, of f is always going to be less than or equal to m mf. Uh, which implies that it's always going to be a distance away from the x-axis less than mf, so it's going to be contained within the cylinder of uh, radius mf around the x-axis. So that's what it means to say that it's bounded, but of course it doesn't need to be continuous, it could just be going like, you know, it could be going all over the place basically. It doesn't need to be continuous at all. So, uh, for instance, our he terrible function, uh, for instance, the one which is uh, zero on all of the um, uh, irrational numbers and then one on all the rational numbers, so like this or something. No, it needs to be more, you know, you need, you shouldn't have gaps in between them, it should, it is a, um, uh, yeah, that's better. Uh, and then it's zero all the, on the, all, on all the irrational numbers. Uh, that is a bounded function. It's obviously not continuous. Uh, so uh, that's what we mean by a bounded function. And we've discussed before that the metric on which we, def the metric, uh, a metric which we can define on this set um, is uh, that the distance between two functions, f and g, is going to be the supremum over x is an element of a, b, of the modulus of f minus g, basically. Uh, so, if the two functions are bounded, then f minus g is also going to be bounded, and uh, so uh, this modulus has some uh, supremum, basically, um, because obviously um, it, it, any bounded set in the real line has a supremum, so uh, this set in, in particular does have a supremum. 
and just want to convince you that it is a set, because this is the supremum of a set, of the set, oh dear, what have I done there, and then mind, it's quite, it looks okay actually, uh, the modulus of f minus g, where, um, and I should write it differently, I should say the modulus of f of x minus g of x, to make it clearer, um, where x is an element of a, b, that's the set we are looking at, now it is bounded, uh, so there is some mf, or, or m f minus g, you might like to call it, uh, which is bigger in mod in size than all of these moduluses here, uh, and therefore it's bounded, so it does indeed have a least upper bound by the least upper bound property of the real numbers. So this exists, and we've seen in previous videos that this is indeed, uh, does in for, indeed form a metric space. What we want to show is that it is not a separable metric space. So uh, this metric space is not separable. This metric space is not separable. And how do you prove it? Uh, well, the proof is very, very similar to um, the proof that L infinity is not separable. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if it were separable, so we'll do a proof by contradiction, proof uh, by contradiction, uh, suppose that it is separable. That would imply uh, there exists some set S which is a subset of uh, BAB. Now, the first thing to note is that BAB is not, absolutely not, a countable set. Uh, for instance, in BAB, uh, the reason that it's simple to see that it's not countable is because in BAB I can find you easily a subset of BAB that is not countable. Uh, so, for instance, consider the subset, what should I call it? I'll call this subset C, which is a subset of BAB, so this is just to prove that BAB is uncountable. Uh, so it's just a little sort of aside, so I'll do it down here. Uh, so um, to prove that BAB is uncountable, uh, the way you, you can do it is construct this subset C, which is going to be all functions uh, which map um, which map the interval AB onto, and it's going to map it either onto, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to replace that with X, rather. It's going to map it X. Specifically, it's going to map it onto, let's say, uh, 1, if x is some value little a. Uh, no, not no, I need to put some... x is some little value little c, and 0 otherwise, basically. So, uh, there are lots of these. c can take on any value between a and b. These are all different functions, basically. Uh, if we draw it out, it's this function here. You have your interval here, a, b. And basically, you're 0, 0, 0, and then at some point, this will see you have a hole, and you are 1 suddenly, and then you go on being 0. And basically, you can let this will see be any element in between A and B. Uh, oh dear, sorry, it's gone out of view. Uh, uh, so you can let C be any, int any element between that, uh, within that interval. So the number of these functions you have is uncountably infinite because it's in correspondence with all the points in this interval. And these are all bounded functions because, you know, the, their maximum is 1. So they're certainly all in here. So we found an uncountable set, which is a subset of BAB. So that implies BAB is uncountable. So uh, if we want, uh, if we stand any chance of this being um, being a separable metric space, then there must be some proper subset. Where you can't use basically the whole set as we did in uh, countable metric spaces. So you have to have a sub proper subset. There exists some S, which is a proper subset of BAB, which such that S is countable. S is countable. And S is dense. S is dense in BAB. Which means that if you give me any X, uh, any X, which is a point of BAB, any function in BAB, and you, uh, I can find you a point in this set, which is distance as small as you like, basically. You give me any, you give me a point, you give me a function in your set, and a distance, I can find you a point in this uh, set S, uh, which is uh, less, uh, which is a distance from that uh, function less than epsilon. And whatever epsilon you give me, I can always find you an S that will satisfy that. Okay, uh, so now uh, consider, now consider a subset of BAB. Consider another subset of BAB another subset of BAB. So we're going to consider, let's call it T this time, subset of BAB. So we'll consider this set T, which is a subset of BAB, and the way I'm going to define it is, uh, how am I going to define it? Uh, so, ah, 
I know what I'll do. Right, t is going to be equal to... Uh, oh, in fact, actually, this is perfectly good. We don't even need to do what I was thinking of doing. Is this going to be perfectly good? Yes, it is. We'll use c. C is far simpler than the t I was going to use. I was going to take all functions that map you onto either 0 or 1, but we don't even need to do that. We can just use the subset c. How convenient. So consider this subset c, which is a subset of bab, which is defined just as over here. And we've shown, and we've you know, seeing that C is uncountable. I haven't really shown that it's uncountable because I haven't shown you that the interval AB is uncountable, but that is assumed to be common knowledge. It's something that you will have seen in first year if you've done a degree in maths. Um, C is uncountable. Um, so, um, right, so, um, but if we consider what the distance between each of these, any two of these points in here, so if we consider the distance act, uh, there is, we have this metric acting on our set BAB. This is a subset of our set BAB. So we can certainly consider the metric just acting on this set. So we can ask what is the distance between F and G where F and G are both elements of C? Well, it can only be one of two things because the distance was defined to be the supremum of the modulus of F minus G where um, the uh, value of the domain on which these functions were acting was within this interval a, b. Now, if those two functions are identical, then f minus g will equal 0 everywhere. So this will equal 0 if f is equal to g. Okay. Similarly, uh, sorry, con uh, conversely rather, <laughs> the opposite of similarly, if they are not equal, then at some point, if they're not the same, then they will have different little c's, basically. So the point at which, so if we have, let's say this is the function f, and I'll draw you another little function here, which can be g, and so it will go along being 0, and we'll have the point that its, its little c is going to be down here. So they have different little c's, then at each of these little c's, what will the difference between them be? It will be a mod. It will have size one. Yes, it could be one or minus one, depending on which uh, which one is uh, whether g is one and f is zero, or f is one and g is zero. Uh, but the point is that the size, the modulus of that, is just one. Uh, so uh, this becomes uh, one basically if f is not equal to g. Okay. So there we go. We have a setup here very, very similar to um, what we were doing in N infinity. Because now, if I construct balls, if I construct open balls, uh, so if I go over onto the other page. So uh, what we have, this is our setup. We have this huge, great set, which is uh, BAB, the set of bounded functions on the interval AB. We have this tiny little subset here, which is C. But all this part, uh, this is a discrete metric space if you just view the metric as acting on the elements of the set. It might not be discrete with respect to if you add in all the other elements, but if you just count the elements in this set, it's a discrete metric space. So if we um, have the points of C here and we take balls, open balls of radius a half around each of the points, they will not, inter in each of these balls, there will not be another point of C. So, uh, let, um, uh, let little c, sorry, let, oh, what should I call these? Uh, let little f, and we'll call it fc, the f little c, which denotes the, um, the uh, real number uh, in between, the, uh, within the interval a, b, which um, it, it, it ascribes a 1 to, basically, uh, rather than a 0. So that's just denoting the specific number there. Uh, let fc uh, be an element of c. Uh, this set, big C, that is now. Uh, then, if we consider... Oh, and this video is getting quite long, so we should cut it and split it into two pieces. 